the money. Dollar, dollar bill, yo. Hey guys, welcome to another episode with Mad Dimes MMA. We are back for another episode, but this time we're going to be doing something different here. I decided, instead of waiting for the breakdown to do it with my buddies, I decided, you know what, let's try Dana White's Contender Series, because I understand. I was struggling the first couple of weeks, but I finally started getting reads, did pretty well last week. Some of my buddies still struggling, like trying to get a read, and I understand. These guys are untested. They're, they're just coming up on their own. They're rising cut prospects. There's still question marks here that we don't quite understand because we're not going out of our way to watch Cage Warriors or Strike Force. We're watching the big shit like PFL, Bellator, UFC, shit like that. So I decided, why not do a breakdown? Why not try to give you some more insight? So I'm going to be giving you my picks, my predictions. I'm sadly doing this by myself. My, bo my boys in the Discord left me hanging, didn't want the smoke. I understand. You're afraid to be wrong. And, I, and don't worry, I got the answers. Let me, help me help you. So we're going to be kicking this off. We're going to be going right into this with Rose Canciasio versus Alexia Thanara. I don't know if I got Rose's name right, but fuck it, we're going to go with it. Now, this is going to be an interesting fight. Alexia has the same fucking game plan all the time. Which is basically pressure pressure forward with the boxing, get him up against the fence or cage, and trip him, get a single leg, get it to the mat, dominate on the dominate top control, rain down some ground of pounds, and lock up a submission if it, if it's there. And if I have to knock her on anything, it's that although she has some crisp boxing, like I really do like her jab, she throws a little wild for my liking. She can leave some good openings. And Rose, on the other hand, she has sick kicks. They're fast, heavy, crisp. She can mix them up well, throw that spinning shit that makes you go ooh and ah. But her boxing, it sucks. It, it's kind of mid, man. Like, in Rose's last fight against Elaine Rose, I get it, a little confusing. When Rose was up against the cage and Elaine got up close, in order to, like, keep her from shooting takedowns, she was throwing, like, weird looping low hooks, which was weird. Left her open for the overhand right, which Elaine did catch her one with once. Which I don't know why she only threw that once because it was there like all the fucking time. But Rose is also competent on the mat. She has good takedowns. She can lock up submissions if they're there. Like she's not lost on the mat, but she wants to keep it on the feet. And honestly, I'm liking Alexia here. She's fought a similar matchup against, uh, I think it is, Subera, Subera Oliveira, something like that, where Oliveira was trying to keep her at range with the kicks and alexia just kept moving forward she was staying on her keeping the pressure found the trips caught some kicks and took it to the mat and that's what got her the decision win and i think she can get that decision win here against rose because rose fought that similar stylistic matchup against elaine and elaine was who i thought was a little more reserved and a little more hesitant was still finding some success pressuring rose up against the fence so i think alexia proved that she can have more success in a, in a stylistic matchup and I think she can keep up that pressure, get her up against the fence, get the trips, catch a kick, take it to the mat, and win a decision. I'm liking the over here too. They're both tough women and I think also Alexia can catch Rose with that overhand right. I think it's there. I really do. So I'm taking Alexia to get this one done. But moving up the card, we have Kevin Vilejos versus Cam Teague. This is going to be a fun fight. They're both strikers. They're both going to get uh, get at it. It's going to be an exciting fight. I know you're looking at these guys thinking, who the fuck are they? But let's start with Kevin. Kevin is an exciting prospect. I'm look, I'm high on him. I can't wait to see this kid. He's young. He's hungry. And his one loss is to Gene Silva. And looking for that fight was a pain in the ass. Because where I found it were the shadiest fucking sites. My phone probably has 18 plus fucking viruses looking for this goddamn fight. Until I wised up and was like, oh wait, it's Dana White's Contender Series. It's probably on ESPN. And lo and behold, it's on ESPN. Oh my god. I don't, it wasn't worth destroying my phone. But watching that fight, Kevin kept it really competitive. And I think that's aging well. Because he showed me he's tough as nails. He ate a sick fucking knee, followed with a hook in the second round, which I thought would have put him to sleep. He had great ring control. He cut off the cage very well. For every, like, two steps he took, he made Silva take four. And that, I think, translates very well against people who don't have good gas tanks. And he also has sick timing. 
and he puts his combinations together well. If you go on YouTube, if you just look up this kid's name, you will find some really nice uh, knockout highlights. And Cam Teague, he's he's good at maintaining range. He, he has a bit of a wide stance, and he pushes a good pace. But his problem is he doesn't have good striking defense. Like against Austin Lingo, I mean, granted, it was a good win, 7-0, beating someone like Austin Lingo. Props for you. I felt like Austin Lingo was beating Cam Teague until Lingo just kind of slowed down. And Cam Teague was just eating all of Lingo's shots. And I I don't think you can do that against someone like Kevin. If he goes into this fight with the same striking defense as last time, I think Kevin gets this done within two rounds. So I'm taking Kevin. He's just showing me he's that guy. And he's so fucking young, dude. He's durable, he's tough, great timing, great ring control. I I think he's a good prospect, man. And Cam Teague just Austin Ling's his best Lingo's his best win. And he was eating shots like his name's Piper Perry, bro. Moving off the card, we have Francesco Mazzeo versus Kevin Christian. Now, as an Italian, I, I'm depressed, man. Because Italians, outside of Marvin Vittori, can't fucking fight. Like, let's be honest with you. Like, sure, the Italians, we can find our way onto the winning side when it comes to a world war, right? But we just can't fucking fight, dude. Like, Francesco Mazzeo, having said that, he's got heat in his hands. He has good pressure, has bombs for hands. Like, he can land that KO shot. But his problem is, he's getting taken down by random fucking people like on the streets of Rome. Like this fucking guy, he's getting taken down by people who are one in one. And it's just not a good look. He's got a good stand up game, but he also slows down. And it also doesn't help that he throws a lot of his shots with a hundred percent of his power. Cause that, that also accumulates dude. And against Kevin Christian, I will say this. If Kevin Christian does not get this to the mat, Mazeo is going to knock this guy the fuck out. I'm just, I'm just going to say it how it is. Kevin Christian has doesn't have good striking defense. He leaves his chin too high up for my liking. But the but the reason why I'm going to pick Kevin Christian here is he has gr he has really good BJJ. I mean, granted, they're not on the same level as the GOAT as Lionheart Smith. But it's, it's good enough. And he's got good takedowns to complement it. And if Maseo's getting taken down by randos in the streets of Milan, like, Kevin Christian here should have a field day. And I think something else that's going to play into his play into his favor, Maseo is young. He is not that experienced. I think the shining lights might get to Maseo. He's either going to be really reserved, or he's going to go out there trying to get another highlight finish, and he's going to gas himself out. No, so, I'm taking Kevin Christian here. I think he can get the takedowns, BJJ work, and get a sub. But if you're going to bet on this fight, take Kevin Christian by submission or Mazeo by KOTKO. Because those are the only two ways I see this fight ending. Because Mazeo just does not have the gas tank to go all three rounds. I think Kevin Christian here is going to win. But neither of these guys are going to get a contract. Do not do not get it twisted. Francesco Mazeo is just not experienced enough. Oh, and Mazeo, he's just too Italian for my liking as well. Like, I just... I don't like it, man. I'm going to take Kevin Christian here to get this one done. But moving up the card, we have Daniel Frunza versus Vadim Kutsi. Frunza has taken this on short notice, but Kutsi at the same time hasn't fought in two years. So it almost evens out. Almost. Frunza, he's going to be better on the feet. I'm going to just say it how it is. Like against Jalen Fuller, I think it is, he showed me some high level striking. He mixes it up well, he slip shots well. He puts his combinations together, had Fuller lost like Dory, and then had him frozen like Elsa. Like, this guy has good power on the feet, and he has great technicality on the feet. And Vadim, in his last fight, he was getting picked apart. He was getting pieced up on the feet. And he, and he, but he, granted, he got the KO, showed some good power. But in terms of technicality, Ferns is going to be better. But I'm going to take Kutsi here. I think what's going to get Kutsi the win is his wrestling. Daniel Frunza has been, both of his losses were against people who exposed him on the mat. And Kutsi has that inbred, like, Slavic wrestling style that I think Frunza is going to find to be so much troublesome. 
and I gotta trust the guy on the full fight camp. I can definitely see him using his wrestling to wear down Frunza and find the late, late fight finish. Or a decision by WrestleFuck. And even if he does entertain the entertain the striking, which he has before, Kutsi still has the power to earn Frunza's respect. And I also do not trust a guy who's from the same country as Ian Kutulaba. Like, it's a no-brainer here. I'm taking Kutsa, Kutsi, whatever, by finish in the late rounds, or just straight up finish by WrestleFuck. Moving up the card to the main event, we have Bailey Schoenfelder versus Dan- Danilo... Bitch, these Russian names. Voya Vodkin. Oh, actually nailed that one. Now, this is tough. They're both they're both heavy-handed wrestle uh, heavyweights who are going to want to keep this on the feet. And looking at their record, I think Schoenfelder's win over Greg Velasco is better than any of Dan- Danilo Voyevodkin's wins in MMA. Like, look at all of Danilo's MMA fights. Every single one of his six wins are against the most obese people in Ukraine. Like, against his fight, again, in his fight against Vasilik, oh my god, dude. It's like they took an ob- he was brutalizing an obese man. It's like they took a guy from the local weight loss program and put him up against Danilo in the octagon to teach him a lesson about stealing the cookie from the fucking cookie jar. Like, I'm not impressed with any of Danilo's wins so far. But, ah, I get it. That's a poor argument. You're you're not beating anyone until you beat them. I get it. But I think Schoenfelder is just the more proven fighter here. And Danilo does have that karate, like, championship, like, on his resume. But if your name is not Conor McGregor, GSP, or Stephen Wonderboy Thompson, your karate style isn't worth two shits. Like, let's be honest here. But Bailey, at the same time, he's gonna—he's kind of undersized for the heavyweight division. But at the same time, he makes up for that with his quickness and athleticism. And he has been past the first round, unlike Danilo. He even looks fucking tired and sweaty in his profile picture. I mean, look at it. I just think Bailey's been a bit more proven. I'm really liking the KOTKO prop because they're both at both tough, both both have heat in their hands. I think they can both go for the KO any moment. So I'm looking at the KO TKO prop, probably going to combine that with the under one and a half for a same game parlay, because I don't think this goes to decision. They're both heavy handed strikers, but if I had to make a choice, I'm going to lean Schoenfield here. I feel like he's proven just a bit more than Danilo. So those are my picks for Dana White's contender series. I hope you all enjoyed this video. I hope we all hit I hope to keep doing this and stay tuned. We're going to be dropping an early leans video before we dropped our full prediction video. And I can't wait for both. We're going to try to be a bit more active around here, but thank you guys for watching. Hope you all enjoyed. I'll see you next time.